Begin self-publishing, episode number 50. Self-publishing for profit. Interested in self-publishing but don't know where to start? Want to get your book onto Amazon? Want to hold your paperback book in your hands? Learn how on the Begin Self-Publishing podcast with your host, Tim Lewis. Now that I've managed to reach the uh, happy milestone of 50 episodes, I think it's a good time to revisit some of the themes that have been running through both the solo shows and the interviews that I've taken to find out what I've learned and what we've already covered. One distinct theme that I've noticed which I was slightly aware of before I started this podcast, was there were actually two distinct types of self-publishing activity. You can either self-publish to make money, that is, self-publishing for profit, or you can go for the creation of a very high-quality product, that is, self-publishing for quality. Now, obviously, there's a vast amount of overlap between these two. And you can create a very high-quality product that also is profitable. But I do think it is worth exploring both these different areas and what you need to do if you're self-publishing for profit as your main motivation or you're self-publishing to create an extremely high-quality product. I'd also like to say that this isn't the same as my distinction between a hobby and a business. Either approach can be taken as a hobbyist activity or as a business. And I think whichever approach you take, you are going to have to run it as a business eventually, once you get beyond any initial success. There's also an argument for saying that in both approaches you should start as a hobby and then gradually move up to start a business once you've seen a little bit of success. In this show, I'm going to talk about the first of those two motivations for self-publishing, self-publishing to make a profit. This is where you're looking to either supplement or create an entire income based on your self-publishing efforts. As any half-decent business person knows, you make a profit by earning more money in than you pay in costs. Now, I know that some of you who are accountants will say, well, actually, that sounds more like cash flow. And, of course, you're correct. For most intents and purposes, profit and cash flow can be considered to be the same thing. So, to self-publish a profit, we need to ensure that we pay as low costs as possible and make as much money as possible. So we're not always necessarily always going for the highest quality product if a slightly lower quality product will actually get us the result we want. Also, from an artistic point of view, we're tending to be more bent towards finding a book that will sell rather than necessarily the book we want to write, which starts off with the first theme which is finding the right book to write. A good place if you're looking to self-publish a profit is to listen to my episode where I interviewed Alex Newton, which was episode 33. There I talked to him about the reports that he writes for for his company, Klytics, where they analyse all of the Amazon charts and categories and look for those categories which are less competitive and have higher sales. I think if you want to be serious about making money in the Kindle store, you need to do some kind of analysis like this. And try and find the intersection of your own knowledge, skills and interest with those areas in the Kindle store which are underserved at the moment. I did my own individual solo show on the topic of which categories and keywords to pick in episode 20. There I take you through how to look at the categories in Amazon, find some for your book to give you the most chance of being able to chart for it 
fairly easy category to begin with, and then gradually build up and get onto a higher category chart. Once you've worked out what the book is that you want to write, you need to start thinking about things like the tools that you'll actually need to start either creating or marketing your book. For writing, I currently recommend using Scrivener. I did a very quick show on it in episode 25. So as you may have been aware from the number of shows and coverage I've given, I'm very excited about Reedsy's book editor. I don't think it's quite there yet, though I think in the next couple of months it may well be in a position where it overtakes Scrivener as my writing tool of choice, at least for formatting and creating the books anyway. There are some things that you would need to do if you're looking to write for profit. For example, I think you would need to set up an awful website and look at building up an email list. I'd say that from a financial perspective, if you're writing purely for profit, then creating print editions makes only a small amount of sense. You probably should have print, print-on-demand print copies from CreateSpace available so that you can, uh, you can give away copies and you can do promotional things. But most of the money is in e-books. That's where you get 70% royalties as opposed to the very low royalties that you'll get for print books. I wouldn't even look to attempt to sell your book into bookstores, given how low the profit margins are there. One decision you you might want to make if you're looking to self-publish for profit is whether to use a crowdfunding approach. This helps to de-risk a lot of the uh, initial investment needed for self-publishing, for things like editing and cover design. One of the first interviews I did was with Ryan Hanley about his crowdfunding efforts for his book in episode 14. The great problem that we both realised during the interview is that crowdfunding, while it can be a great way to actually get the money for your book in a relatively risk-free way, it does eat into the initial sales of your book. So unless you're prepared to give something else away, as a reward for crowdfunding efforts for your book. You need to seriously consider whether it's a good idea to crowdfund your book. The most important area, I think, for making, attempting to make a profit from self-publishing is to concentrate on marketing. Now, to some extent, marketing is something that all self-publishers need to look at at some point, which is why you may have noticed that there's been a slight shift away from the more technical shows towards marketing. I'm still not going to forget the technical shows, and I will come back to a few of them. But I think there are quite a few opportunities for doing social media and other types of marketing, which aren't tremendously expensive. For example, in my interview with Jeff C. in episode 47, we talked about Pinterest. I think Pinterest has a a great amount of potential as a platform for marketing books. It's much more of a long-term platform than the other social media networks. I also did my own show about how I built up my own Twitter following reasonably fast. Another great way to get interest in your book is to go the publicity route. If you listen to my episode with Janet Murray, episode 26, we're talking about how to pitch and get your book featured in various media outlets. Like with anything, it's not going to be a magic bullet. Putting up one Pinterest post and then managing to get an article in your local gazette isn't going to suddenly sell thousands of books. It's all about doing lots of these little things and then eventually, with time, you'll start to see success. One other option is the paid online advertising route, which I covered in episode 38. If you can get into the position where you can pay for advertising and get more revenue from sales coming back, which if you get skilled enough at it is possible, then the actual cost of paying for online advertising, especially Facebook advertising, suddenly becomes worthwhile. 
I've been very candid on this show that actually I've not spent enough time marketing or doing things for my own books. I think that organisation is a very important part of launching a book and doing the marketing of the book. Also a focus on the project. I think you want to try and create a time where you've got a few other distractions around the launch of your book so that you can concentrate on the marketing and other sides of things. So this is basically my advice if you're self-publishing for profit. Focus on the marketing side of things and organise your time well. I'm not suggesting that you should knock off a quick and dirty book with no editing and no professional cover design. I think they're almost becoming just the ante that you have to take into the self-publishing game now. However, you don't necessarily need to spend thousands and thousands of pounds on interior formatting and professional development editing, followed by another edit and then another edit. There are lots of things where that extra little part of effort will take away from your profits for your book. But on the other hand, there is a lot to be said for the self-publishing for quality route, which I'm going to cover in the next show. Profit is not necessarily the only reason to be self-publishing. Books in themselves give you a certain amount of prestige and if you produce a really good quality product, then the benefits may well outweigh the actual financial costs of actually creating a much better quality product than you would if you were just going purely for trying to make money. So I'm going to cover that in the next show. So talk to you guys next week. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please stop by iTunes and rate and leave a review. This helps make the show more visible. For free resources, show notes, and other helpful content, join the community at beginselfpublishing.com. 